And in today's video, I wanna have a little talk with you guys. Not that talk, the Warzone talk. Oh. Now for the past couple months, it feels like we have all gone back and forth about which game we liked better, Warzone 1 or Warzone 2. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts on it. Now I've done my best to organize it into four different categories. It's gonna go along the lines of maps, guns, movement system, and other factors, which I'll talk about. Now, I would absolutely love to hear your guys' feedback down below and what you guys think of my takes and also hear your guys' takes. With all that being said, let's get straight into it. Caldera versus Almazra. Now, Caldera overall towards the end of the game was incredible. The overall map design I like, but that was at the very end. At the beginning, I know for a lot of you guys, you absolutely hated it because frankly, you couldn't even play. I know when the map dropped, everybody was very, very excited as we kind of were tailing towards the end of Verdansk and people were begging and hoping for a really cool new map, which we got, but you couldn't play it on console. So that was honestly the biggest L they took in Warzone 1 because towards the end of the game, it was amazing. The only flaw that I see of Caldera was I didn't like that the hottest spot to drop on the map was going to be peak. So that means that that was in the dead center where all of the good or sweaty players would funnel into peak and then everybody was in the center and then would kind of flood out. The biggest change that made me absolutely love Caldera, hoping it's something that they add into Almazra, is balloons. And this dramatically changed the pace of the game and you could literally never touch the ground by taking balloon after balloon to find fights. Now, I know that this isn't a traditional BR kind of style, and I know that a lot of people weren't a fan of this, which I completely understand. But for me, it really helped the pace of the game because you could basically hit a balloon, land on a team, and then go to another one and just keep flying around the map, which, you know, was something I love. Now, I really did love how we could obviously take, take zips and land on teams, but also you could finesse your way around buildings and around cover. Now, in the open, it's very, very different from Almazra because if you're caught in the open, you're frankly going to die. But with perks like Serpentine, which was a controversial one, after it got nerfed and obviously stims and things like that, you could really finesse your way out of a lot of fights because of the time to kill and where you were playing at on the map. Now let's talk about Almazra. And honestly, I really like the map. I think that it gives kind of that throwback Verdansk vibes and also has a great kind of placement on POIs in certain locations. Now, the only thing that I think is a massive, massive problem with this map is the inability to find players. Like I said in Caldera, what made it great was later with the balloons, and right now we really don't have that. With the lack of UAVs and buy stations, only being able to buy one, you're kind of lost after you fight a couple teams and you're rotating because you don't have a good means of getting around the map. The vehicles obviously in Almazra are absolutely awful, except the glorified Hummer, which is great because they probably paid billions, if not billions of dollars to put it in the game. And I feel like this needs to be fixed ASAP because when your team is trying to rotate, whether there's storm there or take new positions, it is practically impossible to use the vehicles that we have if you don't have a Hummer. Now the layout of the POIs, I don't mind that much. Some of the buildings get very, very confusing based on are you on a first floor? Is there stairs in the first floor? Do you have to go to the second floor to then take a ladder to the third? Some of the buildings are very, very weird. But overall, I think the map design isn't horrible. And I think that Almazra can be great. Now one pro for Almazra that kind of sticks to the traditional BR standpoint is the ability to take high ground on fights. Now, as I said in Caldera with the balloons, it kind of took back from the BR, traditional BR kind of standpoint. We could just take a zip and land on a team or take height from a team, which really, I guess, wasn't as fair and kind of the, the usual boots on the ground feeling. Now in Almazra, there is a lot of high ground where if you have high ground on a team or in a fight, usually you're gonna win that, which I think is very, very nice for the traditional kind of casual play style of how a battle royale should be played. And the map design I think is good for that. Now let's move on to the category of the guns in the game. Now, with Warzone 1, I think that overall the guns felt way better when you were playing Caldera and Verdansk compared to now in Warzone 2. Now, if you guys are new here and enjoy this style of video, it would be much appreciated if you guys like to subscribe down below and join our YouTube community. The reason that I say that is because in Warzone 1, you could do things like cancel a reload, 
quicker reloads, things like that. And just the gunplay, I think felt very, very crisp and just smooth in Warzone 1. I felt like there was always times that I know how my gun was gonna kind of shoot and the recoil pattern stayed pretty much the same. And I think that now in Warzone 2, with all of the tuning and attachments and just the complex of the way they have the guns right now, I'm not a big fan. So to start off with, let's talk about the metas throughout all of Warzone. I feel like with Warzone 2, we still have that kind of loadout meta class that people are using, but it's not as kind of strict as it was in Warzone 1, because with the time to kill being so fast, there's a lot of really good guns, but even then, because it's so fast right now, you can use a lot of things and still slay. With Warzone 1 though, it seemed like there was always a certain loadout that was the best, which I didn't personally like because it doesn't give you a variety of options to use gun-wise. Now, the problem with that now is with Warzone 2, when there is certain meta classes, how complex it is to rank up weapons, for the casual player, this is very, very tough. If you don't have a lot of time to play the game, it's going to be very hard for you to unlock the best attachments because you have to go down the list of getting another gun unlocked and then to level 15 for another gun to get an attachment. It's just a circle of mess. The guns now feel so, so clunky. When you're trying to reload, you can't cancel a reload. Swapping weapons is slow. It just feels like there's a lot of just unnecessary lag in the game. So me personally, I would take the overall feel and excitement of guns to Warzone 1. I loved the way those guns felt all the time. You just knew what you were going to get from the weapon of your choice with the attachments, and it was just simple. Now, with Warzone 2, we have the fastest time to kill we've ever had in the game. Now, I know a lot of people have said that it's technically the same speeds as the OG metas, but those got patched instantly. And there's a lot of guns right now that kill way, way too fast. And with the lack of movement, which I'm going to talk about in the next series, I think that it really, really hurts the game because having good gun skill and a longer time to kill is a skill gap. Now, I know that's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, but I have always been a person for a longer time to kill, especially now in Warzone 2, since they have nerfed movement so much. So that means that we have less movement, which means less outplayability, and the guns kill faster, which lessens the skill gap. To see yourself grow and get better as a player, being able to 1v2, 1v3, 1v4 a team, by hitting more shots, by you know practicing some movement that you've been practicing is a good feeling. But right now with Warzone 2, with obviously the time to kill being so fast, I think that that really hurts the game. So I'm gonna have to go with Warzone 1 again with the time to kill and just how the guns feel overall. I'm gonna take those over Warzone 2. Now on to the topic you guys have probably all been waiting for, movement. Movement. So I've covered this a lot already in depth, but I'm going to summarize my thoughts real quick. Now, in every previous Call of Duty that I've played and that you guys have played also, we have always had movement tactics in the game. Now, with Warzone 2 right now, we have movement tactics in the game, which are absolutely pointless. I say that because that has never been a thing in the past Call of Duties. When I first started playing Call of Duty in Blackout, which is Black Ops 4, every movement tactic in the game you could use to your advantage and you didn't have to use it but as a good player and as a skilled player you practice these things to outskill and outskill gap your opponents going on to warzone one being able to finesse teams plating and running being able to slide around corners and things like that catch your opponents off guard was a skill gap now like i've said though slide canceling is not a skill gap the reason that you slide canceled was to regen your auto tax rent, which helped you move around the map faster, would make you harder to track for your opponents, and helped you obviously get around places much quicker. Slide canceling at its core, pressing circle circle X a thousand times a game, would just break controllers, hurt your thumbs, and just wasn't an overall thing that should be in the game. But I think that sliding and things like that should be in the game to help you outmove and outskill your opponents. With that being said, the movement mechanics that they have provided us in Warzone 2 are absolutely pointless. If you try to slide in the game, I am trying to help you out right now, stop. There is literally no point ever that you should be sliding in the game, which is a movement tactic that the developers provided to us that serves no purpose. And I don't know if there was ever a Call of Duty in the past that they have given us movement tactics to help outplay and outmaneuver your opponents that are pointless. It is better to stand there and pre-aim and not move 
then use some of the movement tactics they provided. I don't think that's right. The other problem with Warzone 2's movement is the inability to keep your tax sprint. Now in Warzone 1, we had slide canceling, which was to help get your tax sprint regen. But I think what they should have done in Warzone 2, which is something I suggested way before the game even came out and we just got rumors of no slide canceling, was this. As we all know, in Warzone 1, we had a ton of melee weapons. And I'm gonna take this page right out of Apex Legends book, but what they should have done is in Warzone 2, had all of those melee weapons, like the screwdriver, the knives, the cali sticks, the list goes on, did really cool stuff. What they should have done is where you could holster your actual melee weapon and run faster and have more auto tax rent to get you around the map. What they could do is sell a ton of bundles, which I know I would buy, that you could hold and flex and have really cool knives. And then if you have these out and running, they should then penalize you if you get shot at or try to engage in a fight where it's going to take a long time to either put the knife away to bring out your primary gun and then it can hurt you if you're about to be engaged into a gunfight now another massive problem with the movement in warzone 2 is the lack of outplay with even a simple thing as plating and running now the people that are against plating and running uh love to say about the realism in the game but i don't i don't even want to go down that road because the realism we're playing a video game and call of duty is probably the last thing from realism if you want realism escape from tarkov is for you but call of duty is not realism at all and plating and running should be in the game i don't know anybody that ever complained about that ever in the history of warzone one and now that we don't have it it is a massive massive outplay system so for the last category i'm gonna talk about the events in the game now, obviously with Warzone 1, we had a lot of our normal contracts we have in Warzone 2, but one of my favorite things about that game was that the money system was amazing in Warzone 1 and Caldera. You could regain for your team, get loadouts and things like that instantly if you're landing in places that have those hot money drops. And that was a great system that kept teammates in the game, kept people playing, and I think that's great. Warzone 2, we don't have that. You could loot an entire POI and barely have enough money for a loadout for your team because it's 32,000 freaking dollars. The funds on the map in Warzone 2 and Almazra are absolutely horrible. And the only way to really get money is obviously doing either strongholds, which are going to be very, very hard because the AI bots, or doing contracts, which if you're trying to regain or things like that, it's gonna be very, very hard to do a contract by yourself if you're on a team of four doing a bounty or things like that, because the lack of money is ridiculous. Not to mention in Warzone 2, how you can only buy one UAV or one precision or things like that from buy stations make absolutely no sense. So once your team builds up funds and has a lot of money, you don't even have things to purchase or buy from in a buy station. Now, one of my favorite things about Warzone 2 that Warzone 1 doesn't have is proximity chat. Now, this is one of the most hilarious features which I can now experience. I didn't get to play the old games like PUBG and things like that, so I know that this isn't a new feature, but it is a really cool feature for Warzone 2 which has proximity chat, so I'll give a tick in the Warzone 2 box of cool things it has. One of my favorite things about Warzone 2 is also nukes. A nuke in this game is crazy because you have to get five wins in a row and then in the next game you have to do a nuke contract which essentially blows up the whole map and everybody knows that you did it. Which I think is really really cool and I think helps kind of something uh, for the players to grind for. Now that's definitely a plus check for Warzone 2 because for me personally, I need something to grind for, to strive for, to get better at. And I think that nukes really help players look forward to something that we didn't have before. To wrap up the video today, I think that both games are incredible. Boo, tell us which one you like better. But I really do think both games are incredible. Obviously, there was a ton of good things about Warzone 1 and bad things, and good things about Warzone 2 and bad things. But overall, I really do like Warzone 2. I think we're an update or two away from a very, very good game if they decide to kind of implement a lot of the things that the community is saying. Now, I just talked a lot, but I would love to see what you guys think down below. I'm going to be reading and responding to a ton of comments. So let's try to keep it civil because I know this is a very, very hot topic. And I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I cannot talk. Be holy smoly. This is 25 minutes. I'm so sorry.